So we're just here, we're taking a stab at starting something, essentially attempting to record our conversations that we would normally have as, as friends, as longtime friends, for the purpose of putting it out there in the world, sharing our thoughts, sharing our ideas, but not necessarily our specific ideas because we're probably not right about much. However, to at least demonstrate that conversations like this happen. And we seem to have agreed on some level that we'll call this attempted intelligence because we may not, we might not be smart, but at least we're trying, right? So essentially the aim will be that we take concepts that we've learned in varying places and we talk about them in order to essentially interrupt the forgetting curve or the projected forgetting curve. So from the point that you learn something over time, you're essentially forgetting it more and more the further away you are. But if you engage, re-engage that topic, sometimes you either remember it better or you become better able to wield it in a functional way. So essentially the first topic that we've chosen to discuss is the Dunning-Kruger effect. So you saw this today. Do you remember essentially what it says? Um, again, just what you were talking about, forgetting uh, at the farther you get away from it. But sure. um, I, the one thing that I remember uh, you kind of summing it up saying was um, like undeserved confidence where essentially you're um, you have a perception of your ability to do something that is inaccurate in okay. your actual ability to okay. do that. So because I'm, I have engaged this topic a few more times, uh, possibly with the aim of insulting people, um, essentially the Dunning-Kruger curve or the Dunning-Kruger effect, what you're plotting is intelligence and self-efficacy. So how smart you are on a measurable test whether or not you agree with the concept of intelligence and how it's measured uh, versus your belief in your skills or ability. So what you have is essentially a reasonable kind of bell shape when you plot this or when it's observed. And people of generally lower IQ score have a high, high view of self-efficacy. So they have an inflated view of their skills or ability. They believe they're more able and more intelligent than they observably are. You have a fairly flat curve in the middle where people believe that they are about as intelligent as they actually are uh, and, not, and have the abilities that they have. Then you get people of higher intelligence, higher than average intelligence, where you get to a point on the IQ curve where people underestimate their skills and ability. Because the outside world underestimates. No, you as an individual. Oh, okay. So let's just say you're wicked smart. Yeah. You have 180 IQ, which is essentially something that doesn't really exist in all other people. Um, you have 180 IQ, but you don't feel like you're capable of much. So the idea is that you are intelligent, you are capable, but you underestimate your ability. And that goes into what has been termed imposter syndrome. Right? So you you can do things but you feel, you have this feeling that people are gonna figure you out and you can't do the things that you're actually observably doing, right? So the reason that we were bringing up in conversation the concept of the Dunning-Kruger effect is that there is, you, you showed me a video of somebody attempting to teach a skill, mm -hmm. right? Or to teach, maybe not a skill, to teach a procedure, yeah. to teach how to do a specific thing. Yeah. And, <clears throat> The confidence with which way they per projected they a lot of confidence. how to do what they were doing did not match what they were actually doing. It was a hot mess. Correct. It was a, an absolute hot mess. I going to use those words, hot mess, but I'm like, I don't know if, because I didn't want to set it up as a hot mess before you watched it. I want you to watch it first. Yeah. I, like, I didn't know what to expect from this video, but I saw it and it was, it was at the point that uh, the main ingredient in the procedure went in. I was like, whoa, that's not what they said it was. Yeah, because they stated that the measurable quantity they were going to put in, the measurable quantity that you're expecting was not that. <laughs> no. So it, it, it threw me off. And so the idea of the Dunning-Kruger effect as observed there is that would you could make the argument that that person's self-efficacy versus their intelligence may not have matched. They may have an inflated view of what they're actually capable of doing. It doesn't mean that they do, this isn't necessarily an accurate thing, but it, was, it catches you off guard. So the reason that I, or the place that I directed the conversation at that point, or the, the point that I was trying to make, is that undeserved confidence is, you know, is awkward, 
<laughs> it's funny yeah. and it's extremely dangerous. Yeah. Right? And I remember I mentioned, I don't know if it was intended or not to be um, educational or funny. Mm -hmm. And I said, it doesn't matter to me yeah. because I found it funny. And you went, it does matter. And then you mentioned it. Yeah. Funny. So it, it matters if, if somebody is attempting to put something out in the world and say that they have authority or say that they have knowledge that they're trying to share with somebody else. And that knowledge comes from a place of inflated self-efficacy. You believe you're really good at something but you're not, and somebody who doesn't necessarily kind of peel through the information and see that you didn't do what you said you were doing, and then they try to copy it, then what you have is this, essentially this, this infection of a piece of knowledge that isn't what it says it is right. spreading through the world, and specifically with what we're talking about is somebody making a drink, yes, right? an like alcoholic make, uh, cocktail. An alcoholic cocktail, and if you're pouring incorrectly, you could cause alcohol poisoning. That could be a danger to health, right? So the person that puts this recipe out or this procedural step-by-step -step how to do this recipe and somebody pours like you pour, but, you could be causing alcohol poisoning. But just even in the comments, it, it reflected what you were saying. You were saying, oh, uh, I'm going to argue with the bartender next time we're arguing about the quantity of, of three ounces or, you know, um, if they messed up with that drink, I still wouldn't even complain and all these other things. So they, point so I think the the danger that a lot of us find ourselves in with respect to essentially where some of our information is coming from so where where some of our learning is coming from yeah. is that we may as individuals not have developed the skill set to vet that information to essentially say oh this is high quality information I should follow this right because we don't necessarily know what we don't know. We don't know what it actually looks like. But what stops you from, like, how do you validate that information? Like, I, as soon as we started this, as soon as <laughs> it turned on, I went, what if we're an example of the Kruger effect? Like, just even making this video. <laughs> so what you're, what you're doing, right, is you're, you're displaying at least an attempt at what's called metacognition, the ability to think about your thinking. Okay. So it's entirely true that you and I, in the process of this conversation or any other conversation, could be a, a strong example of the Dunning-Kruger effect, but we wouldn't know which side we were on. That's what I mean. Because we think something about ourselves. Exactly. So, yeah, maybe it is an example. Of, well, it, it would be hard if you're using the lens of the Dunning-Kruger effect for us not to be an example of it. We just don't know where we are because we're not good at judging ourselves. Right. Uh, but the idea of metacognition, of thinking about thinking, humans are not necessarily good at that when observed, but you can get better at it. Okay. You can get better at it. Now the thing is, sometimes you need external pieces of information. So if I tell you I'm going to pour a certain amount of liquid, and I just free pour, I have no way of knowing that that's what actually happened, aside from trusting you. Right. right? So, blind trust can be a problem. Right? Trust that is assessed. So if you make a claim and you're doing something that you say I should just trust you, and I say, hey, I should just trust you, but I want to know if you're actually doing what you say you're doing, right? So would that, wouldn't that, like, for me, isn't trust kind of built up over time through experiences? So, like, knowing each other for as long as we've known, and I've said, you know, this is what I'm going to do, and I do it, mm -hmm. and then outside of those circumstances, one time I'll say, hey, man, just trust me, but every other time, based on me telling you something that's measurable, that it is accurate, mm -hmm. the one time I ask you to blindly trust me, your trust is going to be higher than if you were talking to a complete stranger. Sure. And then, in, say in this circumstance, so say you're seeking a piece of knowledge that you haven't really figured out before, you haven't been exposed to, the idea that you're putting forth is that trust is built over time. So through positive outcomes, or, or outcomes that at least haven't caused harm, <laughs> right? That, <laughs> I have more reason to trust you as an individual, but that's occurred over time. So I think what's interesting is that you go see seeking some knowledge and you come across this drink recipe and somebody pouring it the way that they did and you automatically blindly trust it. Yeah. That is not safe, Fair enough. right? Because that, that location or that, that location of knowledge or that uh, identifying a concept and having it come forth from a specified place hasn't built your trust. 
Right. Or hasn't built, you haven't built trust in it, it hasn't built trust in you, so why should you trust it? So I think what I, what I kind of want to point to is the idea of asking for blind trust, like this is how you do it, versus you know, building that trust over time. If you just one-off watch a video and you think that that's the, kind of the best way to do it, it's like, I watched the video, somebody else showed me how to do it. You put the trust in that authority, but it doesn't show any reason to have authority. You haven't vetted other sources. So there's a concept of reliability. So applying the Kruger effect, how do I, say I watched a video and then I watch another video, but the two videos are different. Mm -hmm. How do I know which one to trust? Well, and, and this is the deal. This is why I, I was bringing up the concept of having the skills to vet information, mm -hmm. right? So when you immediately see disagreement between things, that should be an alarm bell. When they're, when they're not the same, when they say they're doing the same thing, they're not the same. So what you have at that point is a problem of reliability, right? It's not, it's not giving you the same result. You're asking the same question and you're getting a different result, yeah. right? So the, not to flesh it out completely, but there's a concept of inter-rater reliability, right? So if I, if I have two different things do this, I should get a fairly similar outcome. Yeah. But if I don't, if the outcomes are very different, then there's a dissonance, there's a, di there's a distance between those things. And that should be an alarm bell, I'm like, whoa, I, don't, I probably shouldn't trust any of these. So then what you have to do is you have to look at a bunch more and then start to find the norm or what's most common. Yeah. But that means you have to do more work. Now we're in an information rich time where you, you literally would pull out your phone and pull up a concept or pull up a, an idea or something you're trying to learn about and you take the first hit. You take the first hit on your search engine. The challenge with that is that maybe it's perfect, maybe it's accurate, maybe it's really useful, maybe it's great authority, but you don't absolutely know that unless you've built that skill set. Well, because you don't know because you didn't know before you looked it up. Right, yeah. <laughs> but the thing being that if you have some reason in what you're assessing or the piece of knowledge that you're taking in to say, is this doing what it says it's doing, right? Or maybe you should approach most things, you know, does this mean what it says that it means? Is this doing what it says that it's doing? then that's the concept of validity. Is it doing what it says it's doing, right? That is essentially an overarching term that could say it's valid, right? So this drink recipe that you showed me, it, this is not valid, right? Based at least on the claim that they poured a certain amount of liquid and they did not, right? right? And they all big mess too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then what you, the idea is you have a concept of reliability, right? If I put this same question to different things or ask this same, question of different locations, would I come up with a similar result? And I think the answer is no. But with the skill set, right, to maybe make sure that you're not falling prey to your own Dunning-Kruger effect uh, presentation, to purposely go out of your way and not take the first thing that comes. To say, I need more information to see if there's some agreement. Now agreement doesn't mean that it's right, because you could just pay a bunch of people to agree in public. Right, and then you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. Right, but that's why again, it's that skill set, that ability to think about your thinking, to to try to work with validity and reliability. What we see most of the time is uh, is what would be called utility. So the you know, is it reasonable to do this? Can I can I do this thing for this amount of money, or can I do this? Is is this something that I can effectively pull off? Okay. You, like you know the maybe not the best way to describe utility, but in the converse, conversation reasonable, right. right? So what you're seeing most of the time is utility. So what is parading as reliability is a bunch of people agreeing in public just for the sake of doing it so that they don't stick up, right? Or somebody's paying, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that does happen, right? If somebody, if I gave you some money, uh, actually, no, that's not true. If I gave you some money, you'd probably be like, I don't want your goddamn money. Yeah. <laughs> just to say that, no, <laughs> it's not worth it, right? So yeah. the, I would say that based on watching you over time, you implicitly engage a reliability search, right? Even when you're when you're trying to find, like, say, uh, a cop, when you're trying to find a piece of entertainment, right? You're assessing sometimes the the frame rate of it. You're assessing the uh, the band, like what is it, the, like seven twenty versus ten eighty. Oh, the pixels. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're assessing that because there's a certain experience you're trying to have, and yes. if it doesn't match it, then 
Yeah. What the heck are you doing, right? But then I also like visually check it whether or not the sound and the, the visuals next uh, match up, and mm -hmm. if those are off time, and then also whether or not if you want that genuine feel where you have the intro credits or mm -hmm. you don't have the exit credits or sure. whatever it is, all those little things and the extras and the bloopers mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. So you have varying category which you, categories for varying things which you're willing to do some light work on. You don't just take the first thing that shows up because it's there. Right. Uh, and not necessarily just in entertainment but in other things. Yeah. Right. So I think the, with respect to the Dunn Kruger effect and its ability to be awkward, hilarious and dangerous maybe the best way to avoid it for most of us that was going to be my next question right. how do you avoid that well I, I don't know that you absolutely do because again it could be it, if presented in a certain way because it's a fairly firm mapping of intelligence versus self-advocacy right it could be considered fatalistic as a theory or as an observable phenomenon right it's fairly fatalistic because it's just kind of what you are but the the I don't know that the question is asked been asked how do you manage yourself within what you are well i'm just thinking of examples like just i've known people who operate machinery and we're all we're all trained and this is any type of education mm -hmm. but these are just my real life examples mm -hmm. but essentially we're all trained on the same level in which um, we're all supposed to know the same amount of information and develop over time the same skills. That's the expectation. But it's not the expectations. Um, but it was one of those things where I feel like when the measurable amount of skill is not achieved mm -hmm. in a safe or, um, I guess, just in an amount of time in which you need to be efficient and utilize those skills safely around others mm -hmm. um, and is not acquired or developed, you should be removed from operating that thing because sure. it is now unsafe because we thought you would develop those skills over time, but you didn't, well, and now you're operating this machine yeah. and it's dangerous. Well, the, you're relying on, on a, you're, somebody is leaning into an implicit process, right? Yes. So uh, I've taught you this basic information, I did what I was supposed to do, you should develop the skills, but they're they're not they're not doing the legwork. So I think you know to kind of draw back to how do you manage yourself within whatever wherever you land on the Dunning Kruger effect is to if you are able if you're a person that attempts to do this is to try to think about your thinking do the legwork behave as behave uncertainly behave as if you're probably wrong and whatever you're seeing is probably wrong. If you behave as if you're incorrect to start, not in a way that's self-diminishing right, or self-deprecating, right. but say, hey, you know what, I just, I have some uncertainty. I have, I have questions. But that's the problem with my, the people in my example, is sure. that they don't see it. They, well, you, it's very difficult to see yourself. Right, but I just, in comparison, and with valid examples of expectation. So, can you operate this machine safely in this area to do this without damaging anything or the product. Yep. And then they would go operate the machine in the area unsafely, damage the so environment and the product. So they're capable, but when eyes come off of them, they don't necessarily reproduce what they're capable of. They then I ask them, <laughs> like, what happened, and their response is, Stuff happens, I'm human, I make mistakes. Yeah. But I'll, they do it consistently. Yeah, so that and that's where you know they're they're not asking questions of themselves. Possibly, you know, this is from a distance, this isn't yeah. seeing it up front up, up close. Of but the idea is that you're not checking yourself. So I would say that that's a skill that you have to develop to to be able to vet any piece of information or to be able to vet it or judge any behavior that you're going to undertake you know just a few a few questions and i can't tell you what those questions would be for any individual but you know i think maybe i don't know if you agree with this but from my perspective the way to manage the blind spots that we all have about our intelligence and our self-worth or our self-efficacy is to question ourselves about it or maybe probably question ourselves about it and develop that skill 
because if we're questioning others about it, you might just run into an asshole. Yes, <laughs> and that's what I was saying. Like, I really don't want to go externally for that yeah. because yeah, everyone's going to see you differently. Because and then you know we're still going to run into the same problem over and over, which is why I say that the Dunning Kruger effect might be fatalistic in that you are what you are on this map, but maybe the way to manage yourself within it is to develop the skill of question, questioning yourself. How do you develop that skill? Well, you ask yourself questions and then you see what the results are, uh, either with your cognitive answer, the answer you think, or with your behavioral answer. Well, I think I'm right, and then you go and do it, and well, you break something. I feel, I feel like... But you have to be honest about the outcome. That's fair. I mean, which just, isn't easy for some. <laughs> I feel like the the world, through someone who is at a higher level in metacognition, is just more painful than a person who's not. Like, it, it, <laughs> like isn't that the whole ignorance is bliss thing. Like, they're happy doing what they think, and they feel confident and, <laughs> and they're skillful and like. And they're driving the forklift through a door. Yeah, and they're fine. They're just like, hey, whatever, no problem, you know, no big deal. And then all of the other people who are aware of that are in danger, and they're scared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if someone didn't get hurt, it might be funny, but still, it's awkward. And like, how do you even say like that's not not yeah. good? So you get clashing opinions based on your view of the world. What whatever your view of the world on any mm -hmm. topic is, you get clashing opinions and you get arguments, right? And what both people can attempt to convince you that you don't see what they see. Yeah. Right, so it's not the easiest thing to do, which is why I would say, ask in you, ask inside you. So, I, would you agree that managing yourself in this within the Dunning Kruger effect, where you happen to land, would probably be best done by making it, making a go at questioning yourself as often as possible? Um, I have to agree because that's what I do. Like, okay, it just which means <laughs> you don't help. <laughs> but no, I just I mean like. Um, in the sense that, like, if I ask myself, um, like, if someone tells me a compliment mm -hmm. and they say you're either nice or you're good at something or whatever it is, I'll ask myself, am I good at this? Mm -hmm. And okay. and then over time, I'll essentially try to find out whether or not I have a skill set that I see and others see because okay. if only others see it, then it's so you're you're trying to match your your internal belief with external feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and that might be another part of it, right? So asking yourself those questions and not just relying on yourself and what you believe, mm -hmm. but what is happening. So your in, internal thoughts and the external outcomes or yeah. the external observables, right? Right. So and maybe not relying on so much what people tell you, but what they observably do, right. or what happens when you observably interact with the environment that you're working with. So maybe to try to wrap it up, to say, you know, the Dunning-Kruger effect, like I said, awkward, hilarious, and dangerous. At times. <laughs> I'd say it's always a little bit dangerous, or it ha always has that potential for major danger. I've spent all of them. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends on where you're standing. Yeah. But the, you know, it could be fatalistic in that you fall where you fall and you have blind spots. But to attempt to deal with those blind spots, ask your, kind of look inside, ask yourself questions, think about your actions, and then compare what you think about your actions to what's observable when you sure. take them. Yes. Is that reasonable? Yes, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, agreement doesn't mean shit. <laughs> right? Again, somebody could have paid both of us. Yeah. Right? So, we want to be careful, we want to be questioning, but you don't want to go into a death spiral of questioning. Where you never really get out of the... Yeah, so that, that, and I think that's where maybe attempting to be honest about what happens as a result of your actions observably outside. And I think that, that too, like attempting to be honest, and that's just with the, the exact... You're going to screw it up. Yes. Just to attempt to be honest. I think that's, that's valid. Well, so this is our attempt at being intelligent. Right? Yeah, look at the camera. <laughs> we'll try. We'll try. Yeah. Well, all right, more to come.